What are the limits of a display? Will a display be ever able to pass the Turing test, displaying a reality completely undistinguishable from the real reality? Hey guys, Ty here, so welcome to the VR Tech channel and welcome to this new deep dive tech video. This is what a group of scientists and engineers at Oculus, now Facebook Reality Lab, is working on. And in this video, we will discover how Oculus got from here to here. <laughs> yeah, that was the sound to here, the display tech that will shape our VR future for now. Let's get into it. Let's start from the beginning. We already reached perfection in imaging when you start to create an image that perfectly represents reality, and that's called photography. You guessed it, where we can actually even exceed the perception of our eyes, seeing things almost impossible to see with our human eyes. This is a picture of Neowise I took last night, for example, the comment passing through in these days. Here is much more visible than the fainted view I had in reality. We are even able right now to add virtual objects to a picture, making it photorealistic thanks to calculations of light, depth, etc. But now, with virtual reality, with the idea that we don't have to display on a flat surface anymore, just something that we want to display, but we have to bring to life the entire scene to be able to experience it, to have the user deciding where to look at and how. That's where the problems come out, because we have to display the image needing a certain power, frame rate and resolution, and we need to take into account many more rules than what a TV asks for or even VR in the present situation does. When creating a display, these are the things that you have to solve to aim to the perfect display to reproduce our vision. With TV, we solved some of those. With VR, today, even more. But there are two things left, convergence and accommodation. The kind of a real sense of depth and make them accurate and viable for your vision. And that's where this team at Facebook is working on. And that's why they built so many interesting prototypes to get to something useful for us. The big problem with VR now, and you can try with your your own personal headset if you want, is that our headset have a fixed focus. That means that everything is at actually at the same distance. If you get too close to an object that will be thrown out of focus against what reality will suggest. Now try with your finger in front of you, try to focus on the finger, everything in the background will start to get blur. And as much as you get closer to your finger, well, everything is gonna get blurred and your eyes are gonna start to cross, creating the sense of depth. At the end of the day, just like a camera, you get it out of focus. Now, the thing is that in VR, this thing doesn't work. If you focus on something close, even the further thing in an image will be still in focus. That's because everything in VR is actually distance to accommodate your vision, our eyes. At the end of the day, the display is too close to our eyes to focus on, so we use lenses to make it possible. But fun things here, if you get too close, as we said, not just the background would be blurred like reality, but even the object we are trying to focus on. At the end of the day, it's just like a camera getting out of focus. So how do you solve it? Well, there are different options, always there are problems to solve, and Oculus decided to go on the route of the very focal, the best option to create an enjoyable VR experience supporting high resolution, wide FOV, and high image quality, requiring to solve just two problems, eye tracking and adaptive optics and rendering the blur. So the first idea was easy, change the focus on a regular VR headset in base of where you're looking at, thanks to the eye tracking, a technology that we already saw in the new headset coming out, like the Pico we reviewed on the channel. So they built in two weeks the Prototype 1, a working version of this idea. They didn't eye tracking yet, so they focused on moving displays. And yep, it was loud. But it worked. That brought them to the Prototype 2. It was very heavy. 2 kg or 4.4 pounds of VR goodness, but best of all, it was functional, with real content running, eye tracking to see where the person were looking at, and 60 OF to move around. Now they were able to focus on objects up close, and they added the blur digitally, even the distortion was changing, and if everything sounded great to you, this is what it sounded like though. 
So it was time to solve the noise and for that I write Prototype 3, a regular looking VR headset with all the things we talked about and an undisclosed name. Were we looking at the cancelled Rift 2 and the big debate of last year? Here the creator was miniaturized and made silent. So they started here to work on something a little more ambitious, something to have bigger immersion. They created new custom, very focused lenses, able to display double the field of view. And again, this was completely functional headset, able to play regular games, but yet many moving parts. That we know being a problem in the consumer market because more moving parts Parts more prone to break. That's why they thrown away everything they made and started again to make an electro-optic solution, making a small and light and higher resolution headset with very focal folded lenses, no moving parts and great comfort. There was the difference of the parts. And this was the difference of the size in the parts of these two different prototypes. Using a set of six liquid crystal lenses, each one with a different plane of focus, and they were able to actuate each lens as pleased to create 64 focal states and creating a smooth very focal experience for our human eyes. And just this took around one year and enough to create and this is the result. But yeah, as you may imagine, these things didn't stop because eye tracking doesn't work for everyone because you know, we all have different eyes. So they started to work on something that didn't need the eye tracking using multifocal display, a three-dimensional display but they came, of course, with these own complications. They had to take in consideration many different things. The display had to support very focals, multifocals, adaptive multifocal. It had to have eye tracking to understand if it was needed and not, it had to render and decompose the image in real time, and had to take in consideration virgins and accommodation, of course, as well as, and well, they had to build it, of course, and they built this. It had three displays per eye. It could emulate everything to have the perfect vision, but yet, as you can tell, you could wear it. But that made it clear that you needed eye tracking to have even there a result. But now the question is, what is gonna happen in the future? Well, that's where things get a little more complicated. The idea is this, let's get rid of the focal planes and instead create a focal surface or even more focal surfaces. They built a computational display using a SLM system able to transform the light in a surface, unfortunately wasting some of that, but yep, it was functional. And this is the best result they had though. Not really the best clarity there, but it worked focal surfaces might be a way to go in the future. So now they created all the hardware needed, but now comes the last piece of the puzzle to prepare the image even before being displayed. Because even with very focal displays, you still have the problem that everything will be always on focus on the display. You can add the blur, but what is the right blur? Like the one that we are experiencing every day in our reality? They had to create an algorithm to understand how to create the right focus for every different output and getting off of that just using regular games engine with depth buffers and color buffers. And there was just a solution for that. And that was deep learning. Train a computer to understand where to focus in the game. This is deep focus and it's not perfect yet, but it's much closer than what every engine now can give you. So now we know our future headset will need to have eye tracking and multifocal display because those are two of the major things missing to find and achieve the perfect display to be able to really make it possible to distinguish reality from virtual reality. So well, yeah, things are more complicated than what it looks and I'm glad that in this tech, still maturing, we are able to discover all these things together. I think what we can take from this is that we're still very far from the results needed, but we are getting closer and closer very fast. Very focal displays are already possible to build together and they might even be part of the real Gen 2 of VR. I would say don't expect anything like this happening on a Quest 2 anytime soon. But well, hopefully Oculus will go back to build a real top of the line headset like the Rift, Rift 2 with all the things integrated. But would you be interested in that? Would you be interested in that? Or do you think that the success of the Quest is actually getting away of innovation in Oculus? Let me know what you think in the comment below. I hope you found this journey as fascinating as I did, and I hope I was able to put things down in a less complicated way. All the information in this video are from a keynote at the Electronic Imaging Symposium from Douglas Landman. 
I absolutely suggest to check it out if you want to go more in depth on this stuff. The link is gonna be in the description below. It's an hour and 10 minutes video. It's super interesting, but well, let's say that this is the short version. But yeah, guys, if you like this kind of video, please let me know. And as always, if you liked the video, like. If you did like the video, dislike. Subscribe to the channel for more about VR tech. And if you really love the channel, you can support the channel down there and have your name appearing over here, like these super nice people over here. We also have the merch store with the different t-shirts, like the back to VR t-shirts and the 2020 item for excellence uh, that are the masks. So check them out for sure in the description below. And again, like, dislike, subscribe. See you guys next video. Thanks for watching. Ciao, have a great weekend.